dodge bullets, baby. Ah! This is beyond fairy tale. It's inconceivable. Six thousand eight hundred forty-four players began this main event. Through several grueling sessions, only thirteen hundred eight remain. And for the first time, everyone is under one roof. Somewhere out there is our next world champion, and in the remaining field stand three former champions. Play the player, including the man who won it all twice, Johnny Chan. I'm here to win. I'm going to try to play my best. Winning the main event three times that shows the world I'm still. A great player. Everyone is now face to face wondering who in the room will be the next world champion. You guys want to play some poker with me? Let's go. The yes. tension is mounting. That's what I'm talking about. The pressure yes. rising. Wow. It's time for day three. Oh, yeah. Wow. Welcome to the main event of the World Series of Poker presented by Milwaukee's Best Life. With Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarran. Take a good look around. The entire main event field is together, and for the final time, the Rio Poker Room is filled. They gotta come out punching. Everyone is set to do battle, but before a champion is crowned, the fight for the money will commence. This is gonna be fun. Those remaining hope to be among the 666 players to cash in on the $64 million prize pool. Among those looking to survive are some intimidating pros. I got my work cut out for me today. Along with some outgoing characters. Ray, do this, baby! Yeah. And gifted newcomers. One man who knows how to survive is Jean Robert Ballard. He'll be at table two today. Boys ready? But the only man left who owns two main event titles is at our feature table, Johnny Chan. The incomparable Johnny Chan beat Frank Henderson heads up for his 87 title and more famously beat Eric Seidel in 88. Good luck, everybody. Hey, Johnny, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. That is Kermit Millette meeting the former world champion. Johnny already knows one player at this table, Greg Duros. Greg knocked Johnny out of the 06 main event on day one. Did you play in the Americans Cup in 1981 when Bob Stuba had that tournament? No. It's final table, nine players. I knock everybody out in, like, less than an hour. And so Stupak gave me a nickname, the, or the Orient Express. That's the way I earned that name. Knock everybody out less than an hour. And final table. <laughs> Johnny got that nickname four years before he won his first of ten bracelets. The blinds are at 800 and 1600, a 200 chip ante from each player. And on our Milwaukee's Best Light pocket cam, or the lower left corner pocket cam, Trey Wynn looks down at a six of clubs. Wynn is a poker coach. He has a five-hour training package. Alana would take five hours just to teach you and me the rank of hands. <laughs> He's going to raise it to 5,100. Over to Millette. He is so happy to be playing with Johnny Chan, and he folds over to the two-time champ. Pocket sixes for Chan. Every time Chan has cashed in the main event, he's made the final table, but that hasn't happened since 1992. That is an amazing statistic. Chan will call with his pocket sixes. Hendrick Tuison, the small blind folds, as does the big blind Kenny Robbins, so Chan and Tree Wynn will go heads up to the flop. Chan ahead with the pocket sixes. Flop is four, queen, jack. Chan's pocket sixes are still good. Most of the time, the flop will miss your hand, but the power is in the bet, not the cards. If you bet it, you can win it. Wynn decides to check it, as does Johnny. I wouldn't want to bet against Johnny Chan either. No. Turn card, another four. So Chan with two pair now. Wynn checks again. And Johnny checks as well. River card is a five. Johnny, with those two pair, earns the check mark. Nobody has bet, but now Wynn will bet 10,500 with ace high. Wynn making a late move at this pot. He didn't try to buy it on the flop or the turn. Now he tries to bluff Chan off his hand. Who's he think he is, Matt Damon? <laughs> it's all a sweet money. Here give it away. Well, Johnny thinks the sixes and fours might not be good. He does make the call. Win, ace high, not good enough. Johnny Chan turns over his hand like, what'd you think I had, kid? So Johnny Chan with a nice start at this featured table, working his way to the money. <laughs> I just doing this just so they'll get the crowd excited. <laughs> Stop encouraging him, guys. <laughs> the Orient Express won't get it done today in less than an hour, but a quick start nonetheless for Chan. 
Norman won Johnny Chan won it all in 1987 and 88. He outlasted a combined total of 319 players. Nearly 1,000 more than that remain in this event. Well, even among the masses, few names stand out more than Johnny Chan. Lon, is there a better poker name than Johnny Chan? I'm not talking about the glory of his back-to-back -back main event titles. I'm talking about his name, Johnny Chan. The best name in poker, Johnny Chan. What, are you going to bluff Johnny Chan? I'd wake up every morning and run to the card room if my name were Johnny Chan. Johnny Chan. That name with that many chips, that's scary. What's the chip leader going in today? Do you know, Greg? 800 and some thousand. Holy yeah. Shit. yeah. That is sick, man. Not very many chips on this table. If we put it together, we might not even have 800,000. We look at our E-Trade Financial Tournament ticker. You see the guy everyone's talking about, Brian Shadlick, over 800,000 chips. Among the notable players is David Chino Ream, just off the top 10, and Chris Moneymaker getting close to the felt. And there is Brian Shadlick and his chip caddy being moved to a new table. Let me tell you how many chips he has, Lon. If Shadlick didn't play a single hand today, just got anteed and blinded off all day, we estimate he'd lose about 190,000. He'd still have more chips than the person currently in second place. So if I were him, I'd just take the day off, maybe taking Cirque du Soleil somewhere in town. <laughs> well, maybe the 2006 Player of the Year, Jeff Madsen, is doing just that currently at MIA. I tell you, an alarm clock is a valuable asset, or maybe he's just pulling a Helmuth. <laughs> Honey! Speaking of Phil. They dealt, they dealt him aces and they dealt me ace king again. Those dirty rotten scoundrels. I hope Phil got away from ace king. But I, but I folded the ace king, like right away. Why'd you fold it, Phil? He showed me aces. He folded them because he's the greatest holding player in the history of the universe. Phil, one of three remaining champions still left. There might be four were it not for Pat Pezen. He knocked off the 06 champ Jamie Gold on day one. Peasant right now with under the starting stack of 20,000 needs some help. We might soon be down to only two remaining world champs. 35. Chris Moneymaker has moved his small stack into the middle against Dragoslav Timurak. Oh. Timurak calls. All in and a call. Moneymaker at risk, but he's got the best of it. Chris back in business here with a double let me, up. Let me fly in another day, baby. Chris leads with ace jack, and the flop pairs Timurak. Moneymaker in trouble. Big cards. Turn card, small card. Chris needs an ace, queen, or jack. River card now is a six and money maker gone from the main event, and he will make his exit through a field of players that would no doubt be much smaller if not for him. On to table two to find another pro who has survived to day three. Jean Robert Balland currently in a hand right now. Jean Robert flopped top pair, top kicker against Anton Bergstrom's pocket sevens. Anton checked it to Chase Madden, who's working on an open ended straight draw. 12. Madden makes it 12,000 to play. On to Ballon now. Jean Robert finished eighth in Survivor China last year. Uh, I guess he couldn't survive on BS alone. <laughs> and he's going to raise it to 32,000. Bergstrom folds his sevens now to Madden. Madden is a fisherman. He fishes all day. That's not work. It's fishing. <laughs> Madden, 27 years old, from Sarasota, Florida. He's putting together more than the 20,000 it would take to call. He fishes. <laughs> Madden re-raises to 72,000. Figures he's got Balland on the hook now. Now Balland. Flop a set, bro. You want to see him? Yeah. <laughs> if he flopped a set, I don't think he'd try to drive you off your hand right now, Bobby. Oh. Maybe I save money by raising now. All right, you got me. Milan's gonna fold to Madden. A uh, not so excellent laydown by Jean Robert. Oh, nice Ouch. Milan down, but he's still got some chips. Man, I do need a bracelet. Need a bracelet. I'd be happy to take one in this event. A main event bracelet to be your first bracelet. That would be the bomb. That is a dream shared by many. The 2008 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Brewed for a man's taste. Miller Brewing Company. And in part by the World Series of Poker. Shouldn't you be playing for a bracelet next year? Pre-register at WorldSeriesOfPoker.com. The 2008 World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light, main event. Welcome back to the Rio Poker Room and day three of the main event. Let's get right back to our featured table where Johnny Chan is sitting tonight. When Johnny plays, he is deliberate and aggressive. 
That is Kermit Mullet, 49-year-old Atlanta dentist, World Series rookie with Ace Queen. Mullet will limp in for 1600. Johnny Chan with pocket jacks. Johnny Chan. He just sounds like he's going to win. Johnny Chan. 66. It's a raise to 66. Johnny, one of two Chans left in this main event field. We also have 12 Smiths and 10 wins left here at the main event. And only one Millette who wants people to know that he's looking for a Brazilian wife. You're in the wrong Rio, my man. Jeez. Millette makes the call for 5,000 more. He goes heads up with Johnny Chan. It is four, Trey, seven. Chan with his pocket jack still with the advantage. Johnny Chan still with the advantage. Millette with ace queen checks. Johnny's not going to check his jacks. 12,000. You're up against Johnny Chan. I still can't believe Matt Damon bluffed him in rounders. <laughs> Millette will fold. Gotcha. Hmm. Johnny shows him the jacks. Thank you, John. <laughs> You're welcome. So Johnny Chan takes another pot at this featured table. Yeah, they love it. <laughs> the Johnny Chan show will be a minute. It is the Johnny Chan <laughs> show at the poker table for sure, but he also has been known to put on a show at the bowling alley. My partner's a pretty good bowler in his own right and decided to take Johnny on in this week's edition of Heads Up with Norman Chad. Johnny Chan fancies himself a hustler at the poker table and also in the bowling alley. The question is, can he out-hustle me while answering questions from me and watching me bowl? What is that? It's my approach. You play your way, I'll play mine. Every time you sit down at a poker table, isn't there some young punk who wants to bust Johnny Chan? As soon as he beats me, he wants my money. He says, Johnny, can I have you all a grab <laughs> for my money? If you don't lose heads up to Phil Hellmuth in the main event, we may not know Phil Hellmuth as we do today. Do you feel you owe the world an apology? No, I think Phil owe me a favor. I let him win. <laughs> I'm 25 pins down with one frame to go. I feel like you got like a 50 to 1 chip lead on it. We're done. What do you think of my bowling style? It's unusual. Thanks for being polite. You're welcome. And viewers, to be perfectly clear, that is actually how Norman bowls. That is the way I bowl, folks, and I stand by my 142 average. How could have Phil have more bracelets than you? Know, so. Yeah, Johnny comes up <laughs> one short of Helmuth. <laughs> you played probably about 900% more tournament than I did. Yeah, that's true. He never missed one for 40. Play every one of them. Yeah. All of Helmuth's bracelets are in Hold'em. Chan has bracelets in Hold'em, Omaha stud, and deuce to seven draw. And there is the man with the most bracelets in World Series history, Phil Helmuth with 11. He's on the hand right now with Raymond Yee, who puts out a bet to Phil. How dare he? <laughs> Action on Helmuth. But he's going to fold. <clears throat> he seems bothered. He is antsy. Come on, get some hands out, please, dealer. I just ate. I feel great. They're all starving. They're ready to throw it off, buddy. It's Phil against the world. Let's get some hands, baby. The man with the most bracelets still has chips. The man with eight has none. Eric Seidel knocked out. Oh, see you guys in November. Seidel, fifth all-time on the bracelet list. Over to Jason Young, who won his first bracelet this year, wearing that A-Rod jersey. One difference between Jason and A-Rod, at least Jason has played in the World Series. <laughs> Ooh. Another World Series vet with a couple of close but no cigars, David Chino Ream. He's made two final tables, but no bracelets. Want action or what? Sure. Even if you beat me out of the pot, I always want action. I'm telling everyone that. I'll take your action, Chino. What, you got a few talking chips right now? Let's go. Let's go right now, chump. Another top player without a bracelet right there, Victor Ramden, currently in a hand with Daniel DeVoe. DeVoe just made a call for the rest of his chips, and he'll hate what he sees. His pocket sevens way behind Ramden's pocket aces. Now the flop coming out is no help to DeVoe. Turned card a queen. Aces are still good. 
Another race on the river. Ramden wins it. DeVoe is gone. Use them wisely. Ramden won a WPT title in 2006 and has 10 World Series caches. And currently over the 400,000 chip barrier. An aggressive player with lots of chips. That will be trouble for the rest of the room. At another table, one of the most talented players in the world without a bracelet, Gus Hansen, contemplating a 20,000 chip bet by Doug Crane after the flop. Gus with a gut shot, but Crane ahead with Ace King. Gus has cashed in two of the past four main events. Nine on the turn, pairs the board. Hansen still behind. He checks. Crane checks. River card is a five. Crane with Ace King has the check mark. Hansen first to act. And Gus is going to bluff at it with 28,400. Hansen trying to scallywag Crane. And Gus has picked a nice spot to posture. Crane also has only ace high. And, well, Crane not going gently into the night yet. And we're getting close to the money, so every chip counts. Crane commits the chips, though, and he'll take the pot from the Great Dane. Great call from the amateur. Yeah, Doug Crane, the World Series newcomer, gets the best of the pro. Gus is below average now. He's got that. Thank you, Gus. Thank you. So Crane from Munson, Ohio, takes in a nice pot of about 160000 Hansen got caught thinking he could take advantage of someone hoping to cash, but now it's the top pro who is further from the money. A main event field that started with 6,844 players is dwindling. They came in all shapes, sizes, and ages looking to be a champ here at the Rio, including 84-year-old Tony Grant. I guess you've never seen me play before. Tony owned Keensburg Amusement Park in New Jersey for many years. I think we played together on the internet. <laughs> Sitting next to funny man Billy Gazes. I'm 84. You're 84 years old? That makes me feel good. <laughs> More than double me. I thought Bill wasn't a math guy. Not too many people more than double me anymore. <laughs> Anybody on his table could be my son. That could be true for almost anyone in the room. And in fact, there is a father son duo in the main event Brett so Youngblood that. and his father, Art Young. Well, the only father son left, and they stick us at the same table. <laughs> Brett won a bracelet in 04. His dad's a solid player, Our too. Chips combined, we still probably don't have the average chip stack, so. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Amazing you guys are the same table. It's crazy. We didn't even realize until we walked in this morning. Uh, you know, until we walked in. Art named his son Brett after his favorite TV show when he was growing up, Brett Maverick. Well over 100 tables in play, and those two coincidentally at the same one. Yeah. Amazing. Jen Harmon might not like her table draw with Mike Mattiso. I'm here to bring you luck, Jenny. Jen's got two problems. She's short stacked, and she's got to listen to the mouth. <laughs> Double and triple up my girl Jenny over there. I've already begged. Have you? Yeah, yeah but now you got, I'm here for you, baby. I don't have enough chips, so I, I'd be there for you, but. Jen has never cashed in the main event, and it's not looking or sounding good at the moment. There's Michael Carroll, who's had a couple of famous table mates, Jerry Yang on day one and Phil Locke on day two, alone today, but doing just fine without a counterpart. Can you believe Michael's got two kids, 19 and 16? He could pass for 19 himself. He's 39 years old and a very good no limit hold'em player. Another player doing okay without her counterpart, Maya Geller. She's engaged to Patrick Antonius. Maya's still hanging in there. She's doing better than her hunk to be. That hunk has moved all in. Antonius, with a pair of kings after the flop, leads James Delessandro's ace ten of hearts. Turn card now. Delessandro with a flush draw. So Delessandro can knock Antonius out with an ace or a heart. River card now is a hard, and that's going to do it. Delessandro wins the hand with a flush, and Patrick Antonius, one of the more dangerous players in the game, is gone. Patrick, we hate to see you leave, but I really enjoy watching you walk away. <laughs> Over 1,000 players left in the main event. Chip average around 130,000. And here at the featured table, we see Johnny Chan is sitting better than most with just under 200,000. Chan with pocket sevens, limps in for 1,600. Action over to Tree Win. Win with pocket kings. Win has a computer science and education degree from Cal Berkeley. And he will raise the action to 6,500 with those kings. He and Johnny locked horns earlier at this featured table. When Johnny first started, he was a hothead and he lacked discipline. Things change. Johnny makes the call for 4,900 more. Here's the flop. It is eight tray. Five. Kings are still good for win. 
Johnny checks. Win now with those two kings. Will bet 9,000. Win bets half the pot. Chan. A check call. Johnny is a non-believer. Turn cards at 10. No help to Johnny Chan. He's way behind those two kings and checks again. Tree win now. Puts out a bet of 19,000. Win again. Betting about half the pot. Looks like Johnny is still a non-believer. My first ex-wife was a non-believer. Johnny with another call. So, the river card now. Four. Win gets the check mark with his pocket kings. Chan checks a third time. Well, Wynn doesn't know what to put Johnny on. Not sure if he should bet again here. Tree win. Checks back. Two seven. Two sevens aren't good enough. Pocket kings for Tree win will win that pot from Johnny Chan. Sometimes non-believers pay a price. Chan lost about 20% of his chips on that one. He still has 161,000. All right, let's go past the Milwaukee's Best Light No Limit Lounge to table two. Jean Robert Ballon contemplating a call of 12,000. Jean Robert with a nut flush draw trails the pocket queens of Andreas Jorbeck, but Jean Robert will make that call. Jorbeck from Stockholm. There are a lot of Swedes still alive here at the 08 main event. Turn card is another diamond, and Ballon hits the nut flush. He earns the check mark and bets 22,000. Does not hesitate to lead out there. Jorbeck with his two queens and a flush draw of his own will make the call. River card now. It's already a done deal. Ballon with that check mark. What is Bobby doing there with his hand? 80,000. He's making a big bet is what he's doing. 80,000. Jean Robert is over betting the pot here. Trying to make his hand appear weak to Jorbeck. Ballon's actions now have put Jorbeck in a quandary. Boy, pocket queens in a big situation against an unpredictable player. Jorbeck makes that call. He won't like what he sees. And Ballon is going to get paid off with that flush. Yeah! 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 Bobby finds his voice with a quarter million chip pot. And a critical misread by Jorbeck. What chips to work with again. Maybe enough to make the money. Back to the Rio, and there's the missing Jeff Madsen. We just started. This is the first hand, right? <laughs> Second. Second. Okay. Probably going to raise. Jeff checking out his chips for the first time today. He lost uh, about 15% of his chip stack. But hey, when he was player of the year in 2006, he didn't show up late, did he? The guy who should have showed up late today is Brian Shadelick. He started with 800,000. He's lost nearly half of that stack since the start of the day. I told him Cirque du Soleil, pricey tickets, but hey, be in better shape right now. At the other end of the spectrum is Norwegian Sigurd Eskeland, celebrating as one of the current chip leaders. Who? <laughs> Another one of the leaders in the room, Jeremiah Smith. Last year, he was just reporting the chip counts as a blogger at the World Series. I still don't know what I'm gonna tell my wife I'm playing yet, though. You don't know you can tell her what? That I'm playing. Tell her what I tell my wife. Real. See you in court. Real solid woman. It's not work. It's research. I kid, I kid. <laughs> all right, well, Jeremiah Smith jokes around. It's all business for Pat Pezen, who was pushed all in. Pat with about 24,000 chips action on Kostaki Economopoulos, who makes the call. Economopoulos with pocket sevens. Pezen with two aces. Economopoulos, the longest name we have ever graphicked. Two black sevens in there somewhere. Now the flop. Economopolis still way behind. Still looking for a black seven to knock Peasant out. Turn card is a black 10. Aces are still best for Peasant. Peasant in good shape. River card's a jack, and Peasant will double up and stay alive. He continues to outlast a lot of top pros in the main event, including his good buddy Daniel Negrano, who's known Pat since they were youngsters in Toronto. Pat Peasant is a good friend of mine from my pool playing days. I met him when he was... 12 years old and little scrawny kid. We just used to pass some time playing pool. Then he started getting into poker and gambling, all that kind of thing, and 
we've been friends for ages. I only come to Vegas during the World Series, but I would say I've taken at least a couple thousand of pictures with Daniel. Every time he's with me, he becomes my personal photographer. Just walking with him and then people stop me and say, take a picture of us, take a picture of us. <laughs> and then Pat's like, sure. And then two seconds later, you get another tap on the shoulder. And he's really not that good at taking pictures. I haven't heard back from any of those 2,000 people. I'm not sure if any are posted on their, uh, on their walls. I would love it for one day to me be walking down the halls and have someone hand me a camera and say, can you take a picture of me and Pat P? I just don't see it happening anytime soon. You know, Lon, I've taken a lot of pictures of you. They just didn't take place in the hallway of the Rio, and you never knew about them. How much to keep you quiet? Just let me call one flop, and we'll call it even. <laughs> All right. Back to our feature table. And Mr. Johnny Chan. How many Chan is there? You, you're, you're, your first name is Chan, too? Sean. Sean. Huh? Sean. 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 Sean from the Sean. I keep hearing Chan. Shawnee <laughs> Chan. Sean. <laughs> That is Sean Jing from Arcadia, California, an IT professional. That is Johnny Chan, a poker professional. And Johnny on the Milwaukee's Best Light Pocket Cam, 9-4 of clubs. Chan, the first foreign-born player to win the main event in 87. Now it's fashionable. 9-4, he raises it to 4,500 on Henrik Tuason, Pocket Queens. Tuason went to South Danish University. I believe they are the Demon Deacons. He calls for 4,500. Jing with 10-9 of hearts. Jing has bachelor and master degrees in computer science and attended NYU as a PhD candidate. Too much education. All right, Darwin, hope you've studied because here comes your flop with three players. 5-3, Trey. That was fun. <laughs> Tuason leads with his queens. Johnny Chan, first to act. And Chan continues to represent strength, makes it 8,500. Some players like to bet the flop out of position. It can seize control from your opponents. Plus, Johnny just loves to attack. Tuison makes the call with those queens. Jing will get rid of his 10-9 of hearts. Johnny cannot be thrilled he got called there. Turn card four of hearts. Chan pairs his four, but he's still behind the pocket queens of Tuison. Johnny slows down and checks. And Johnny is in trouble here. Tuison checks as well. So now to the river. The river card is a deuce and up and down straight draw on the board, but Tuison gets the check mark with queens up. Chan, first to act. He checked the turn, but doesn't look like he's checking here. Fires out for 10,000. Johnny's going to pretend he has an ace for a wheel and throw out a value bet bluff. And Tuison gives it up right away. So Johnny Chan correctly figured the time was right to bluff, and that is the planner's good instinct moment. Johnny Chan. You had the ace. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe was good enough reason for Tuison to fold. He was outplayed by one of the best. The Planters Good Instinct Moment is brought to you by Planters. Instinctively good. The action unfolds at a new time as the race for the money is over and the true battle begins. And on November 11th, the highly anticipated final table. The November 9 will compete for the most coveted prize in poker. It's the World Series of Poker on ESPN now at 9 and 10 p.m. Back at the Rio, Jen Harmon has moved all in pre-flop. She gets a call from Asher DeRay, Jen's king Trey, trailing DeRay's pocket sevens. The flop is 4-8 queen, nothing in there for Jen. Mike Mattisau looking on, hoping his table mate survives. Turn card now, a jack does not help Harmon. Jen's going to need a king. River card is a nine, and that's going to do it. Jen Harmon, once again, no cash in the main event. And Jen has made this walk far too many times. Another player <laughs> heading in the wrong direction. Our former chip leader, Brian Shadlick, continues to leak chips. Front row seats at Cirque du Soleil would have been the way to go. It's a circus without the animals. Is that right? Yeah, I don't know. How disheartening for Shadelik. While he loses chips, our new chip leader is Sigurd Eskelin, who continues to collect chips. That's got to be an alias. I don't buy it. Across the room, top pro Victor Randon has a lot of chips, too. You want some action, sir? And perhaps Victor wants to put those chips to work. I'd be just happy if you went out. Frank Kiment, he's put out a bet to Victor. He's a lawyer, Victor, call him. <laughs> Victor lays it down. 
Okay, Kim Yancey shows you shouldn't give information to a top pro like Ramsey. Okay, buddy. You won, wrong one. Oh, I'm not, I'm not keeping track, man. You can keep track. Victor Randon took a hit there, but still over half a million chips. At table two, Jean Robert Balland raised with ace queen Tim Leahy from Atlanta, Georgia, then moved all in with pocket jacks. How did I get myself caught in this? I guess I gotta get lucky. Balland getting the right price here to call. But I'm not good enough to lay it down. You are. 43,800, what? 43,800. Jean Robert makes the call. <laughs> His ace queen trails the jacks of Leahy. One time, baby. Oh, what am I saying one time? I never say one time. <laughs> you just did. Just Ace, babe. Ace. <laughs> An ace and no jacks. Actually, no, do a queen. Forget the ace. Just do queen. The wrong queen. guy is standing up. Leahy's the one all in. The flop now 9, 10, 8. All right, give him his jack. Forget it. Give him, give him. Flop him a set. Flop him a set. No a queen. Jack would give Jean Robert a straight. Leahy still leads with those pocket jacks, though. Turn card now. Is a jack, and there is the straight for Jean Robert. Small, small. He now needs an 8, 9, 10 jack or queen to survive. River card's a king. Jesus! <laughs> and Jean Robert wins the hand yes. and knocks off Tim Leahy. Oh, I'd actually rather hear him say one time on an endless loop than Nizuts one more time. <laughs> one a coin flipper. So Balan doing well at table two. 850 players remain in the main event, about 200 spots away from the money. Back at the feature table, action is folded around to Johnny Chan, and he looks down at Pocket Kings. Johnny, it will raise it to 6,000. Action folds over to Kamar Cyclophone. Born in Laos, he's a poker dealer here in Las Vegas. 10-8, offsuit. I'm all in. <laughs> and moves all in. All in with 10-8 off with 20 big blinds left. Not good. Action back to Chan with two kings. I have 41.5 total I got. 10, 41,500 to call. Oh, he's coming. Yeah. Johnny makes the call and Cyclophone in deep trouble. Good call. I got nothing. I was just making a move. Bad time to make a move. Very good call. Johnny's gonna roll. So Cyclophone at risk against the two kings of Johnny Chan. You mentioned he's a poker dealer. Very nice people. So, so poker players. All right, here we go to the flop. Do you believe in miracles? <laughs> Where's Al Michaels when you need him? Do you believe? Hey, you got two out. Nah, I know. You got straight, quads, two fairies. Uh, Three win is very optimistic. Wrong time. Oh, this is looking like a 50,000 chip gift to Johnny Chan. All right, here's the flop now. Four, five, ten. Cyclophone with a pair of tens. It's going to make it interesting to put a six or a seven to club. <laughs> six or a seven to club. I already know. King. Turn cards. A queen. No help. If Chan gets unlucky here, he will lose a third of his stack. The X-Man needs a 10 or an 8, or he is whamboozled. The river now is a four of diamonds. That's going to do it. Johnny Chan wins the pot. I thought you were making a move. Kamar Cyclophone knocked out. I'm always making a move. He think I'm making a move 10 years ago. I love it, man. I was chopping my lips. Johnny Chan collecting chips. That's a bad sight for everyone else in the field. The 2008 World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light, main event. Back inside the Rio, Jean Robert Ballon picking up more chips at table two. Hey, if they ask you to survive it again, would you? Yeah, I don't know if I would ever do reality again, bro. Just to, like, be stuck and not doing stuff for that long. You know, as poker players, we're like action junkies. Try being like stuck in this booth for five years, Bobby. Action. Hey. I missed the main event last year because I was out there in China. You know, Jerry Yang, never heard of him. <laughs> I'm like, who? <laughs> so far, so good for Jean yeah. Robert as he continues his survival quest at the main event. Another guy looking to survive, Adam Schoenfeld. He just doubled up. I'm going to keep a totally cool poker face. Adam's never cashed here at the World Series. He's 0 for 27 lifetime, but he says that's just the equivalent of the 08 World Series for Gavin Smith. <laughs> 
Another player who is surviving just fine right now is Pat Pezen. Pat now over 100,000 after starting the day with only 17.5. And somewhere, Daniel Negrano is wandering the streets of Las Vegas without a photographer. Victor Randman just called the all-in of Damian Carrere. But Victor comes up on the wrong end of that. Carrere shows the nut flush. Carrere, another product from that incredible University of Waterloo poker factory. So Victor not playing it safe, and he loses over 200,000 chips right there. And as we get closer to the money, a nice windfall there for Carrere. Now, despite losing that pot, though, Ramden still left with a decent stack, and that's good news for Ramden and others because cashing in the main event means more than just personal profit for Victor. I'm from a small country in South America called Guyana. We have a lot of poverty. I mean, we never starved, but it was really, really hard. I want to give back something to humanity. I've been doing it as part of an organization. It's called Guyana Watch. We take a team of doctors from the U.S. and we find a lot of kids from our country in need of surgeries, minor surgeries to major heart surgeries. All the kids are gonna live normal lives again. And that would make me feel that I'd made a difference in somebody's life. If every year we can go and make a difference in two or three or five kids' life, we would have made a big impact. I just wish I can get a lot of money in this main event. If I win, I would just take every kid that I can find in my country and just take them out and give them new hearts. That would be my wish. And Norman, how can you not root for a man like that? 25% of Victor's poker earnings and 10% of his business earnings go to Guyana Watch. On the E-Trade Financial Tournament ticker, you see Victor and the rest of the field 140 eliminations away from the money. Chip leader is Sigurd Eskeland. Chip average about 170,000 chips. Johnny Chan is over that chip average right now at the feature table. And here come some cow. more chips. Oh, man, we got some chips now. <laughs> and they belong to 22-year-old Keith Ferreira with almost 400,000. Maybe he got them from Brian Shadlick. The game is on, gentlemen. <laughs> and Johnny, with a pretty good stack himself, will have to be careful with Ferreira's bigger stack now at the table. Action on Sean Jing, ace-queen, offsuit. Nice. He announces raise. Seven, seven, seven. I don't like raising when the new guy next to you is still unstacking his mountain of chips from another table. He raises to 7,000. Millette folds. Action on Keith Gibson. He folds. Johnny Chan now. Chan with queen five of clubs. Chan inducted into the Poker Hall of Fame in 2002. I don't know what took them so long. Chan folds. Now to the new guy, Ferreira, with the big stack. He's got ace-queen offsuit also. Same cards, Lon. I mean, same exact cards. I'm going to say a total. About uh, 80. About 80. About 80. About 80. It's just impolite to sit down and the first thing you ask your neighbor is how much you got. <laughs> Ferreira, though, will just make the call. He will not push any harder on Jing right now. So ace queens to the flop. And there you go. Guaranteed split pot if they both stay in it. The ace hits both players. A check from Ferreira. Zheng bets 15,000. Both players, of course, with top pair and the queen kicker. Ferreira. Wow, that's how he got the big stack. A raise to 47.8. A check raise. That's impolite and that's rude. For Ferreira trying to bully his neighbor. Let's see if uh, Zheng yields to the power of the big stack or fights back. Yeah, maybe Zheng. Worried about making the money or making a move. He folds. Now, Zheng probably didn't want to risk his tournament there. We're, we're getting so much closer to the money. And Ferreira takes that pot. Welcome to the table. Yeah, the big stack comes in and imposes his will immediately. He ain't got so much chip he doesn't need to play anymore. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> Must be nice. Must be nice. So as we get closer to the money, we're seeing the big stacks push the small stacks around. At the outer tables, a bigger stack has just pushed Mike Matisseau to the brink. Amateur Garth Paul has bet enough to put Matisseau all in. I call. And Mike will call. This could Matisseau, be it for the mouth. So Matisseau's chip's at risk. And each one waiting for the other to turn over his cards. And Mike turns over pocket aces for the lead. His read is true. Paul can only knock out Madison with a river six or eight. Now the river that's card, that's a nine. That's what I'm talking about. Madison doubles up through Garth Paul. And Garth Paul gives a recharge to Mike Madison. That took three days for that pot. 
The mouth now over the chip average in the room. Yeah, 239,000 chips. Mike the mouth now armed and looks to roar into the main event money. Tonight's Poker Pack is brought to you by FullTiltPoker.net. The probability of being dealt just one ace is about 15%. Not bad, but of course you have the same chance of being dealt a deuce. The 2008 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Brewed for a man's taste. Miller Brewing Company. And in part by the World Series of Poker. Shouldn't you be playing for a bracelet next year? Pre-register at WorldSeriesOfPoker.com. Welcome back to the Rio Poker Room. Fewer than 800 players left. I got nothing. Jeff Madsen Bye. has just Let's called go. two all-ins. And he shows six high. He's up against ace king and king queen. Wow, it's, so good. it's good. It's good. Sorry, guys. Uh, Madsen apologizing, but his hand is not in terrible shape against those big cards. Now the flop. 10 4 deuce. Madsen with a gut shot straight draw. Turn card now is the tray. And he hits his straight and knocks out two players. Oh, man. Yeah, he came in late. He raised with squad douche. And he knocks out two players at once. It's a good so life. Good. What do you say to your opponents at that point? The blue shirts attacked me, and I, I called with six high. Well, that makes sense. I raise. I raise. Come on. At another table, Gus Hansen has announced his intentions against Sean Farley. Sean up at 23,000 after the flop. Gus is all in for 84,000. And a call from Farley. Hansen at risk. Hansen shows a set of fives to Farley's two nines. Gus in great shape. Turn card now is an ace, and that's going to do it. Farley drawing dead. Gus Hansen with a set of fives has doubled up. And Gus still looks like he could use a, a shave and a schwitz. To another table now. All right, I'm all in. Phil Helmuth has raised enough to put his opponent Raymond Yee all in. After the turn, there are three spades and two jacks on the board. Oh, my God. Translation, either I'm about to lay down the best hand or take a bite out of a legend and get an earful. Can't believe it. Yee is going to fold. Take it, Phil. Shows 8-7 of spades for the flush, but laid it down. Boy, he lays down the flush on the turn. I play so bad. Turn the last card, baby. I wasn't going to push on the flop. I wasn't going to push on the flop. You're drunk dead. I'm a flop. I flopped the king half flush. Or maybe I'd ace king. <laughs> I don't think Phil had the flush. He wanted to see the river card. Didn't matter what he had, he won the pot. He's over a quarter million chips right now. So that former champion doing well. Back to the featured table, our other former champion in the field, Johnny Chan, has not been able to add very much to his bank today. Action folds over to Kermit Millette. He looks down at pocket eights. He's got a pocket pair, but he's still looking for a Brazilian wife in all the wrong places. <laughs> the Atlanta dentist limps in. Now Johnny Chan. Ace seven off suit. In the small blind. 1,200 more to call. And he limps in as well. I'm surprised Johnny didn't pop it there. Oh, look, Lon, I'm now questioning Johnny Chan's play. <laughs> Henrik Tuison in the big blind. Four deuce of clubs checks his option. So three players will go to the flop. Trey, seven deuce. Johnny Chan with a pair of sevens. Tuison with a pair of deuces and a flush draw. Millet, a pair of eights are still best. Chan first to act. That's 6,000. Chan likes top pair, top kicker. Everyone with a pair, but Tuison with that flush draw has the best chance of winning this hand, and he calls. Brazil's the best place to find a Brazilian wife, no? It is indeed. He's here. <laughs> Millet with the best hand just calls. Six on the turn. Millet's pocket eights are best still. But I guess he doesn't want to go to Brazil, so he just came to the Rio. <laughs> I don't think there are any Brazilian women left in the main event. Chan checked it. Two is in now. Needing to approve. He's got a straight draw and a flush draw. Bets 15,000. Millet with those eights comes right along. Now Johnny Chan. And Chan will commit the chips, too. Everybody playing small ball here. Nobody willing to commit too much. Millette in charge right now with his pocket eights as we go to the river. River card pairs the board. Millette gets the check mark with those eights. Chan first to act again. Pair of sevens. 
Sees a bunch of undercards out there. Bet seven thousand. I'm sorry. Did Johnny Chan just bet seven thousand into a pot of more than seventy thousand? Seven thousand. I couldn't beat this chump in bowling. <laughs> Tuison folds. Now Millet. Cost almost nothing to call. He does call. Pair of seven. A pair of eights is better. Good in. Woo, Johnny. Mm. It hurt my feelings that time. Well, it's Johnny's chip stack that Thank was you, hurt sir. today. He had a strong start, but Chan was down for the session, though his quest to make the money for the first time since 1992 is still alive. I'm just trying to make it into the money. I don't know if you guys are aware, but we're getting we're getting close. How close? You got heaps of money. Uh, chips. What are you talking about? Time to tighten up. Fold, fold around. I don't think that's going to happen on this table. Medic flaunting his game plan, real or not, for everyone to hear. On the Milwaukee's best side pocket cam, 8-7, into the muck. There's chip leader Sigurd Eskeland. Now you don't need to steal our blinds. I'm not stealing your blinds. Okay. He folds the queen 10. Next up is 35-year-old David Saab. He's been wearing that Superman shirt every day at the main event, so now they call him Superman. The 10-7 of hearts. He raises to 7,500. Here's Odell. He won his bracelets in 03 and 07. Well, this is how you win chips. You just raise the other blind, hope he has 10-8, and he'll go away. Big blind does call, though. Oh. Well, if he doesn't go away, plan B is outplay him after the flop. And the flop is 8-5-6. Odell takes the lead with a pair of eights. Saab with an up-and-down straight draw. He is first to act. Saab saw his friend Tino Licic playing on TV in 2003 for millions of dollars and said, heck, I should be doing that. Saab bets 10,000 on that draw. Odell now with a leading pair of eights. Will raise it with top pair to 28,000. Odell says 10,000 is an insult. 28,000 is respectable. David Saab. Ooh, not going away quietly. A re-raise. Wow. To 85,000. Saab says 28,000 is an insult. 85,000 is acceptable. And a quick and gutsy call from Odell. I love aggression, especially when I'm not playing. King on the turn now. Odell still leads with his eights. He adds a flush draw now. Saab checks this time. All in. Odell pushes. A gutsy instinct from Frankie Odell for all his chips, and it's a good one. Odell just with a pair of eights line, but Saab's not getting the right price here to, to call on just a draw. He needs over 175000 to make the call. And he folds. That's it, what, homie? <laughs> yeah. That's it, what? Frankie's a tough piece of work. Nice hand. Thank you. <laughs> so Odell takes that pot. It was aggression versus aggression, and the most aggressive won it. You're all excited, huh? When you get all in and it's before the bubble, I'm gonna get excited. I came to play, I didn't come to play. Perfect setup for this day three. Some amateurs are gonna walk on eggshells and just try to finish in the money. The pros are full speed ahead. Norman, this is that moment of the main event that everyone's been waiting for. It's time to make the money. Those remaining already outlasted 6,000 players, which unfortunately for them won't count for much if they don't outlast 60 more. Well, you've got a lot of folks out there just hanging on. Please let me cash. Please let me cash. Please let me cash. These people disgust me. There's no honor in crawling across the finish line. I want to see some players charge into the money. I want to see chips at risk. I want to see some gamble. Norman, if that's what you want, that's what you get from the guy we've got sitting over at table two, pro poker player and philanthropist Victor Ramden, not just trying to make the money for himself. He uses his winnings to help as many children as possible in his home country of Guyana. Ramden looks down at ace six of hearts. Victor, 40 years old, lives in New York. Here's Victor. <laughs> he is playing with Bill Blanda, a cousin of Hall of Fame football player George Blanda. Ramden raised it to 9,000. Blanda made a World Series final table in 2005. I raise. Pocket nines, Blanda says raise. Victor should say, here's Bill. <laughs> And here is Bill. It makes it 30000 to play. He's a retired investor from Texas, plays poker full-time now. I'm weak, really weak. A weak ace, into the muck. Take my money, buddy. <laughs> I'm sure it's only bait. <laughs> Blanda loves talking to the other players at the poker table. Does it have GPS on it? You're going to come tracking it later? <laughs> Victor doesn't use GPS, but he does put his initials on all his chips. This is sure to be a big moving day here in the Rio poker room. At an outer table, Chao Zheng is hoping to improve against Karan Radia, who was all in. 
Chow has a flush draw. Radia flop top pair. Turn card now. It's no. a five of diamonds, and Chow Zhang wins that hand with a flush. No. Radia's gone. Radia, a 23-year-old nice student at Northeastern University, and he sees his main event end abruptly. So Radia will go home short of the money. It's a lot of baby. Come on, baby. It's not the final table here. We have to solve. Chow's got a lot of different ways of saying poker is nice. <laughs> Elsewhere, Mike Mattiso flopped a set of sevens. His opponent is all in with a nut flush draw looking for a spade. He doesn't get it. Yeah! Mattiso wins the hand. And that is Mike's signature celebratory move of late. Run away from the table with a little fist pump. And the field is one closer to the money now. Two former main event champs remaining here. One of them, Phil Helmuth, is all in. 89 champ is up against Raja Katamori on a board of Queen 5 Deuce. Mikey, there's already 300,000 in the middle and I'm all in. Phil gives us an update. Claiming please. Oh, I'm not claiming please. Katamori folds. Buddy, he, re he raised me, I re-raised him 60,000. He raised me, I re-raised him 60,000 and shipped it all. What do you think I have, boys? Who needs Sports Center? Phil gives you instant highlights. <laughs> Three, four, it was a straight draw. Straight <laughs> draw. Phil's having a lot of fun at this main event, it looks like. The other former main event champ still remaining is Johnny Chan. He's in a pot right now with Tree Win. After the turn, Johnny leads with a pair of aces. Win a pair of eights. These two have been knocking heads here all day. The poker coach against the poker champion. Win puts out a bet of 23,000. Three diamonds on the board, too. And Johnny's not going anywhere. Makes the call. Now the river card. Chan ahead with the aces. And Chan now with the check mark with those aces. Wynn teaches low-stakes players how to play better. Chan teaches low-stakes players to get the heck out of his way. <laughs> Johnny checks. And Wynn's going to stay aggressive. 48,000 now after the river. Yeah, Wynn has fired out a lot of bets against the great Johnny Chan at this table. No fear. Chan might be scared of the diamonds on the board, trying to figure out if his aces are good. Chan makes the call. Wynn confidently turns over his eights. No, not good enough. Aces are best for the two-time main event champ. He's Johnny Chan, and he shoots Wynn a Johnny Chan look. That's what I'm talking about. I'm trying to blow up the Chan man, man. That is a message that should be heard throughout this Rio poker room. The pros are here to play. The 2008 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Brew for a man's taste. Miller Brewing Company. And in part by the World Series of Poker. Shouldn't you be playing for a bracelet next year? Pre-register at WorldSeriesOfPoker.com. Each and every year, there's one title every player is hoping to avoid. The money bubble is broken. Bubble Boy, out of luck and just one out of the money. 716 players remaining here in the Rio. All want to cash, of course. Maybe none more so than Adam Schoenfeld. This pro hoping to cash in a World Series event for the first time in his career. I'm going to go for a high-risk maneuver here. If Adam finally makes the money, that would leave me as the best player never to cash at the World Series. <laughs> Across the room, someone who knows about cashing at the World Series. Men the Master wins, second only to Phil Helmuth in a record number of caches. And there is his wife, Van, Mrs. Master, who's alive and doing better than the Master at this main event. Someone else doing better than their better half, the fiancé of the eliminated Patrick Antonius, Maya Geller. Geller's all in with pocket kings. Tamir Akrawi has two jacks. I miss Patrick. Maya needs to avoid a jack on the river. River card is an eight, and Maya wins that hand to double up. Maya and Patrick met at the Bellagio here in Las Vegas. They lived together for a while at the Bellagio, and Patrick proposed to Maya at the Bellagio. Heck, when I'm at the Bellagio, yeah. all I ever do is lose. Be careful, I <laughs> chips. Almost 120,000 chips. Elsewhere, Mike Wilson has pocket jacks. He moved all in after the flop of low cards up against Robin Larson, who called with ace-king high and needs to catch to eliminate Wilson. And the turn card is a king, and Wilson is in trouble. River card now a nine, and that is no help to Mike Wilson. He has been knocked out of this main event. 
Robin Larson eliminates the former stockbroker from Canada. Mike had to overcome a lot of obstacles to play here in the World Series. No money this year, but we wish him luck in the future. There is the main event bracelet. You'll see it awarded to our new world champ on November 11th. Are you over 21? <laughs> what do you think? I don't know. You look pretty young to me. Thank you. That's a compliment, huh? Yes. That's going actually 34. Action on James McManus, not the American author. This McManus is 23 years old from Dublin, Ireland, and he looks down at an ace and a queen offsuit. McManus graduated from Dublin City University. I believe they are the Demon Deacons. Deacons. Yeah. 8,500 is the race for McManus. <laughs> Action over to David Saab. Saab with pocket jacks. Born in Korea. Lives in Manila, spent a lot of time in Australia, as you can tell by his accent, and he makes the call. This is a remarkably international feature table. If INS walked in here, we'd have six or seven empty seats in a hurry. <laughs> the flop is a couple of fours and a jack, and Saab flops a full boat. McManus, look at that percentage, 1% chance of winning this hand, and he bets 10,500 into the pot. Saab's got to love that. He's got McManus all but dead here. A flat call from Saab. McManus in severe trouble. Turn card is a nine of hearts. Saab now with a check mark, holding that full house. McManus checks now, hoping for a free card. Saab, 20,000. McManus just with ace high. It's a little less than half the pot. McManus is going to come along for some reason. Well, a really bad read on this hand for McManus. He thinks Saab is posturing. Eight of hearts on the river. McManus checks again. Saab's got to bet it. 60,000. That's a full house bet. Well, McManus thinking about it with ace high. He seems convinced Saab has squadouche. You know, he might even be thinking of raising here to take Saab off a marginal hand. That would be an unmitigated disaster. <laughs> unmitigated. He's not going to get much of a read on David Saab in his current posture. Wow, McManus calls. <laughs> Saab's got to love that. And Saab shows the winning full house. And McManus feels really, really stupid. <laughs> He's high, not going to win that pot. I could have been a great call if he had a different time. Yeah, Lon, and you know, I could have been a um, great male model if I had a different face. Yeehaw. Absolutely a cause for celebration for David Saab to get paid off there. All right, away from the feature table over the Milwaukee's Best Light No Limit Lounge to table two. Victor Ramden has raised the action to 9,000 with Ace Jack. Action on Burke Aiden, 40-year-old player who won his seat in a home game tournament. We're seeing a lot of that now. Aiden is a real estate investor in Florida. Hi, Race. And he's going to raise it again. Ramden wondering what this guy's up to. He makes it 30000 with pocket queens. I'm all in. <laughs> Ramden's going to make a power play. Boy, earlier we saw Victor lay down A6 suited against uh, Bill Blanda when he raised with pocket nines. Here... He raises Aiden all in with ace jack off. He's got 100, right? What is it? What? He said I'm all in. I heard what you said. Well, if he heard what Victor said, how come he hasn't called? Normally, th this is an easy call. All that can beat him are, are pocket aces or pocket kings. But making the money here Ooh. has to be on his mind. If Ramden has him crushed, Aiden goes home without cashing. Aiden. World Series rookie and amateur player up against a very experienced Victor Ramden. Why won't you do that? Why won't you do that? He did it because he's Victor Ramden. He's got a decent hand with Ace Jack, and he knows that most amateurs are holding out for the money now. I fault. Ramden sensed he can make a move, and it works. So that is the platter's good instinct moment. He played too good. Yeah. Show the bluff. I don't bluff. Show the bluff. You show? for the game. Come on, show Please. it, Jack. You see, rule number one, you never re-raise the original razor, especially when I'm raising. 
It's because I'm crazy. All right, uh, we will have this conversation next time. All right. Okay. I hope you're here. A power play at just the perfect moment by Victor Ramden. The Planters Good Instinct Moment is brought to you by Planters. Instinctively good. Welcome back inside the Rio. The tension mounting. The field is shrinking. We're just 23 players from the money right now. I'll make that 22 players as Jeff Matson has just eliminated an opponent and rakes in his chips. Matson once was the youngest bracelet winner of all time. He just turned 23. If he were to win this bracelet, he'd become the youngest main event winner ever. And there is Habat Khan. He brought his wild antics to the final table of the main event last year. This year, quite the opposite. And like Matson, Havad Khan is 23. He too can become the youngest main event winner ever. He is quiet, but still aggressive. A re-raise there gets his opponent to fold. And what a buzz in this room, Lon, as we get down to the money. But the new Havad Khan remains very mild and very sedate. Yeah, but still collecting chips. That's the same old Havad. At another table, Mark Foss is in a pot. The river's just come down. Two pair on the board. Action on Foss. He checks it over to his opponent. Foss is 24. He would have had a chance to become youngest main event winner also, but since the final table this year is not till November, he turns 25 before then. Foss calls the big bet by his opponent, and Mark turns over a nice pocket pair, and that's enough to win the pot. It's a bad river. Foss won his bracelet in 2006 in a no limit holdup event. So Foss collecting some more chips there. At another table, there is the record holder for youngest main event winner ever, Phil Hellmuth, with just a couple of months shy of his 25th birthday when he won it all in 1989. Phil just raised pre-flop. His opponent has re-raised. And Hellmuth mocks. When Phil mocks, his mind races with very bad thoughts. <laughs> Honey? Uh-oh, he's hot and bothered. You don't respect any of my races right now. Please, please give me another hand. send somebody home, please. I could listen to him vent all day. Here is our E-Trade Financial chip count. The chip average about 200,000. Those top pros are doing better than average. Sigurd Eskeland at our featured table is about 200,000 behind our chip leader in the room. That man right there, Jeremiah Smith. Smith has had a good day. He's taken over the lead. He has almost a million chips, and he has put enough in the pot to put Leo Fernandez all in pre-flop. I know your cabezas. I don't know that. <laughs> Does Leo want to risk it all here? Your cabezas. I don't know if he's got aces. Toss it in. Okay, show you my card. You show you your card. Fernandez gives it up. We're getting close to the money. Fernandez wants to hold on to those chips. And the richest gets richer. This has been a great day for Smith, who's picked up almost 600,000 chips on the day. And it is certainly better to have the chip lead than to be reporting on the chip leader, as the blogger turned poker player will be the first to tell you. I moved to Las Vegas and was struggling to find a job. And I saw that card player was hiring interns to be a tournament reporter. So I spent the summer of 2006 writing down hands for the internet. I got to see Jamie Gold's amazing run and the pain of people busting out. Oh. The great thing about working in the poker industry is it's understood that at some point you're probably going to play. You want to play a big pot? It's kind of funny because a year ago, I was sitting in the media room, checking out what's happening from behind the rail. This year, I find myself on the other side of the camera and on the other side of the table. One time! It's been an amazing experience. It's been a lot of fun. <laughs> I am really hoping that I don't have to go put that media credential back on. This is a little bit more fun. Jeremiah attended a pastoral ministry and plays rugby. He says he's yet to come across another poker player who is a pastor and rugby player. The weight of the money bubble really pressuring the short stacks right now with less than 20 eliminations before that bubble burst. Back at the featured table, action on Sigurd Eskelin, not worrying about that bubble as the second biggest stack in the room right now. He looks down at Ace Queen. If I understand this correctly, Eskelin is a fourth grade teacher and he was chip leader here earlier on day three. Yeah. It just sounds made up to me. He's going to raise the action to 9,000. 
Action over to Nanad Medic, 25-year-old pro from Canada who won a bracelet this year, Ace King. Now, this guy looks like he should be chip leader. From the big blind, he'll call for 6,000 more and go heads up against Eskalin. Eskalin dominated by Medic. And there's an ace in that flop. Hits both players. The king kicker for Medic will play. And he checks. That flop is bad news for Eskeland. Eskeland, though, bets out 15,000. Well, he's normally aggressive, and he has reason to be aggressive here, but he is crushed by Nanad. A raise. Nanad's going to announce a raise. There's the 15. There's the 15,000. Nanad with top pair, top kicker, deciding how much to raise. He's got Eskalin right where he wants him. 35 more. All right, 35,000 more to Eskalin, who's dominated by Medic. How much do you have behind? Medic has about another 80, 85,000. Just under 78. Actually, he has just under 78. <laughs> I'm all in. Eskalin. I have to call. He's going to push. Nanad's going to call. In a call. It's Medic at risk, but ahead. Nice answer. Nanad looking for a big double up here against one of the chip leaders. And the turn card is a nine of diamonds. Nanad a huge favorite to double up. Escalin can only knock out Medic with a River Queen. The river card. Oh! oh! Is a River Queen! Wow. Wow. Nanad Medic gone in a flash. Well, he started the year with a bracelet. The hand very well, sir. Ends it with a bad beat. Boy, you can't fault either player, but that's going to sting Nanad for a while. You took the gamble, you hit the card, that's okay. cool, you know? Yeah, well, he played the hand well, I think. He did, he did, he absolutely. That is one lucky school teacher. Stay out of your way, buddy. I, I can't lose today, it seems, you know? You should just stay out of my way. To win the World Series, you have to get a bit of luck. That's just the way it goes. And on this important day, the luck was not with Nanad Medic. The 2008 World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light, main event. Back at the Rio, 676 players left. Norman, just 10 from the money. It was $10,000 buy-in. First payouts are $21,000. To the outer table, Vanessa Russo is all in. And gets no callers. Which one? If you want to tell me, I'll, 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 I'll I should have re-raised before the flop. I had a very big pick. A very big pick. Bigger than 10. I should have re-raised before the flop. I was just scared. I should have. Why does Vanessa have her purse or, or bag in her lap? Act like you plan to stay for a while. Jeez. <laughs> you know, if I'm invited to her wedding, I might not go. You are dying to go to that wedding. Across the room, Alan Cunningham moved all in and got a call. And Alan wins the pot to double up. Alan has won a bracelet three years in a row. Of course, now he'd have to win the main event to keep that streak alive. Back to table two, Victor Ramden with one of the top 20 stacks in the room holds queen nine against Bill Blanded seven six. The flop missed both. Blanded checked. Ramden putting together a bet of 32,000. Right. Well, Victor's bluffing with the best hand. This is an easy fold for Blanda. That doesn't make sense to get involved. If I'd only thought that before meeting Cassandra. <laughs> Blanda folds. So Victor Ramden with his monster stack playing hardball again takes that pot. I'm trying to give away my chips, but nobody's taking it. I tried to take them, then you fought back. <laughs> so you couldn't beat Queen High? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, wow. I made a good read then. I had 6-7. Back now to the featured table where we have three-way action after the flop. Seagard Escalin has King-10. Frankie O'Dell also has King-10. David Saab has ace high and a wheel draw to lead right now. This is a tough trio. No one here likes to give an inch. Escalin is first to act. He bets 20,000. Action on Saab now. Saab with that draw and ace high makes the call. Frankie O'Dell folds, so heads up now to the turn. Turn card now is a deuce, and Saab hits his wheel. Esklin, first to act, that's 40,000. Esklin is frisky. He's going to represent an ace. Saab, of course, is in a slightly better position because he actually has the ace. <laughs> 
Well, you see here the aggressive style that has allowed Eskalin to accumulate chips, and it's the style that is allowing him to deaccumulate chips. And Saab is going to raise it. Wow, more than a pot size bet makes it 120,000. Well, this is an easy fold for Eskalin. Eskalin has two, three, four, five, ten king. <laughs> See, two, three, four, five, ten king. Eskalin finally gets the message and does fold. David Saab with the wheel will take that pot and siphon some chips off of Eskalin. Do you have fans in the audience? No fans? They like your Superman shirt, that's what it is. It's a Superman shirt, that's right. Everybody's a fan of Superman. <laughs> David Sobs known for his shirt and his laugh, but what many don't know about him are the struggles of his past. I came to Australia uh, when I was six. My mother, she'd gone through one of those mail order bride processes and I used to live in a small little mining town. And it was actually kind of rough. It's a little bit of racism and, you know, the, there were some pretty rough experiences. You know, as a child, sometimes you'd just be walking in the street, you know, grown men would actually come up and they'd spit in your face. And, you know, I mean, these are pretty shocking experiences, especially to go through as a child. I came from a fairly poor background, um, but it, it really gives me the incentive and drive, even today. I love poker. I'm not 18 anymore. I'm 35. Um, and I'm still hungry. And, you know, I am still passionate about poker. When I am on the tables, I don't see it as money anymore. To me, it's just chips, and I'm hungry to win, and all I want to do is win. Well, he won an Asian Poker Tour event earlier this year, and the Aussie Millions heads up last year, so he does win. We're three players from the money and playing hand for hand. Each table stops after a hand is complete to prevent any player from stalling. At an outer table, David Peters has moved all in with pocket queens, trying to double up through the chip leader, Jeremiah Smith, who has nine six of clubs. As we approach the bubble, Smith was trying to just pick on a shorter stack. With his tournament at risk, Peters picked up a pretty good hand. <laughs> Jeremiah raised a 200,000 from the small blind. And when Peters re-raised all in, Jeremiah called another 160,000 with 9-6 suited. And oh my, Smith flopped a straight. As they say in poker, that is sick. Oh my goodness. Well, Peters not done just yet. Peters needs runner runner to stay alive. Turn card, does pair the board, he's got a shot. There's one runner, he'll need a 10 or queen now. River cards an ace and that's gonna do it. Jeremiah Smith knocks off David Peters, who is crushed. And the bloggers back there taking note of the ex-bloggers glory. I, I, have, I have been dying to abuse the bubble. I, I won't lie. So I couldn't resist. With that, Jeremiah, the first one over a million chips. But now we are just two more eliminations from the money. Elsewhere in the field, Dominic Pronka was all in and ahead after flopping a set of sevens against the two pair of Andrew Brokus. Brokus looking for his third straight main event cash. Pronko looking to double up here at a critical moment so close to the money. Turn card is a 10. Pronko one card from doubling up. And now an eight and an eight only would send Pronko home. And the river card. Ah! Oh! Is that eight? Another gut-wrenching knockout as Pronko is eliminated in 668th position. What a tough way to go out, just two away from the money. Brokus hit the two-outer to knock off Pronko. So now we are one away from the money. The next one out is the bubble boy of the 2008 main event. This Poker Fact brought to you by FullTiltPoker.net and Hold'em, the starting hand with the worst odds of winning is seven deuce off suit. If you see those two hanging out together, walk the other way. Look around. Take a good look around. Wow. Everyone in the room is about to cash. Everyone that is except one. One more elimination and we are in the money. Yeah. Next person out will be the Bubble Boy. 667 players left. We've got an all-in and a call at the outer tables. Corey Mitchell with Pocket Jacks all-in was called by Edmund Maker Tishian with Ace King of Spades against Pocket Jacks. And the flop is all oh, Spades. Maker Tishian hits the nut flush. Another sick flop, and now Mitchell needs runner, runner, full house, or quads to stay alive. Wow. Mitchell on the ropes. Turn card is another six. 
Jack. Oh, there's one tantalizing runner again. Mitchell needs another sixer, Jack, or he's Bubble Boy. River card. Oh! Yeah! It is the Jack. Mitchell wins the hand. Oh. He's not the Bubble Boy. <laughs> and he's thrilled about it. One person in all of Clark County, Nevada, is happy. Corey Mitchell. I can just imagine what went through his mind. Please, let me hit this. Another drink, smoke, gamble again. <laughs> He's got a lot of promises to live up to. Well done, Corey Mitchell. He's alive for the money. Oh, my God. <laughs> so we are still looking for the bubble boy or gal as we go back to our featured table action on the young Irishman, James McManus. So he looks down at Jack, 10 of diamonds. McManus started playing poker in college, primarily online. He's going to raise it to 9,000. Three times the big blind. Escalin with pocket sixes. Escalin got into cards by playing Magic the Gathering. What a sexy raise. Wow, he does raise it to 30,000. A raise of 30,000 is sexy? Get me 30,000 chips, Lon. David Sobb's been away from home too long. <laughs> <laughs> so the re-raise back to McManus now. And he pushes even more. 86,000 now to play. That's a bigger raise. It's getting hot and steamy in here. Yeah, the shorter stack's now turning the tables, putting pressure on the big stack here. Escalin lays it down. Raise the razor and take it down. And McManus shows Whoa! the bluff. Oh, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, now McManus feels very, very, very smart. Is this a Scandinavian as well? No, have a 10. <laughs> it should be the full betting person. <laughs> full bet with Jack 10 suited. Norwegian is uh, looking at him, and uh, I think he's thinking, I'm so going to get you. That's what he's thinking. <laughs> he bullied the bully. Well, we are still one player away from the money. And we do have some action at an outer table. Steve Chong with pocket eights moved all in pre-flop. He's up against Jesse McEwen and his pocket kings. Chong's going to have to improve or he's our bubble boy. Anxiously awaiting the flop. And here is the flop. It is deuce, jack, deuce. McEwen's kings are still ahead. Chung still looking for an eight or running hearts. Turn card. Is a heart and Chung with a flush draw. Well, the bubble won't burst easily. No. Chung needs an eight or any heart other than the king. Otherwise, he's bubble boy. River card six of spades, and that's going to do it. Steve Chong just made 666 new friends as the bubble boy. Yeah, word will spread, and this place is going to erupt. Justin Phillips and the others just made over $21,000. Make that money, boys. 666 players in the money. Now, as the field gets smaller, the cash gets bigger. The action unfolds at a new time as the race for the money is over and the true battle begins. And on November 11th, the highly anticipated final table. The November 9 will compete for the most coveted prize in poker. It's the World Series of Poker on ESPN now at 9 and 10 p.m. The 2008 World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light, main event. We're in the money, baby, in the money! Jason Young still alive for a second bracelet. It's like carnival at this Rio right now. The whole room takes a break to celebrate, and they deserve it. And how about this? Adam Schoenfeld cashed. The relief is palpable. I'm now the best player never to cash at the World Series. Relief. Now I want to win $9 million. Step one, money. Step two, $9 million. Adam Schoenfeld cashed at a World Series event, I believe, is one of the seven signs of the apocalypse. <laughs> If recent World Series history has taught us anything, it's that the short stacks will be very active right now. And one of those short stacks is Justin Phillips, ace-king high against the aces of Tom Hanlon. The river card doesn't help him, and Justin Phillips is gone. Well, with 21 grand, maybe you can get some uh, Armani overalls. <laughs> Across the room, Phil Helmuth has now extended his record of most cashes at the World Series to 68, facing an all-in bet by Tom Cope on the flop. Now I make all my money. 
I'm making great moves right here. Phil Hellmuth making his patented speech. And this is not the most attentive audience the poker brat has ever had. No, it was a concession speech. Phil folds. Cope will take that pot. Men the Master is second in the number of caches at the World Series behind Phil, but he's knocked out here. And now it's going to be up to Mrs. Master to bring home the bacon. And Wynn is keeping the main event hopes alive for the family, playing on her first main event. And everyone's attention now focused on that bracelet after already having some fresh cash in their pocket. All right, back now to our feature table. Action on David Saab. Saab looks down at Ace four of clubs. Saab owned a company that was an internet service provider. He started the business in 1996. With Ace four, Saab raises it to 11,000. Action folds over to 21-year-old Swedish player Paul Christofferson. In the big blind. Jack eight of spades. He needs 7,000 to call. And that's what he'll do. This table's got gamble written all over it. Christofferson and Saab now to the flop. Flop is ace, Trey King, Saab with a pair of aces and a commanding lead. Christofferson checks. Saab with those aces, checks behind him. Saab probably could have ended it there with a bet. Deuce of hearts on the turn. Saab earns the check mark. Christofferson drawing dead. But he's reaching for chips. And he will bet 20,000. Christofferson bluffs at it. Saab gets what he wanted. He raises at it, 50,000 now. That should be see ya, wouldn't want to be ya. Not so fast, says the Swedish player, a raise to 130,000. Did I tell you this table had gamble in it? Uh, did I not, Lon? You did. And look, he's got David Saab trying to rub the gamble out of his eyes. Saab got Christofferson to bet exactly what he was looking for, and now he's paralyzed by the re-raise. Wow, and Saab gives it up. Wow. Aggression is key at this table, and Christofferson shows the bluff. The Jacks are hot today. You know, Jack 10 suited, Jack 8 suited. We should all uh, bluff if we have a Jack suited Jack in our hand. <laughs> Nobody's wearing a cowboy hat, but this is wild, wild west poker. Yeah, you heard Escalin. He got pushed off a pocket pair by a suited Jack earlier. Saab, though, not finding the humor in that moment. All right, back to table two. Victor Ramden in a three-way pot. Ramden with a straight draw. Bill Blanda with a pair of Kings leads. Edgerton Bullock comes up way short with Jack 10. And he checks it after the flop. Over to Victor Ramden now, who loves aggression. He bets 20,000. Now to Blanda with the best hand. And he comes along with a call. Bullock folds. Ramden and Blanda move to the middle of the ring again. Turn card now is an ace. Nobody has an ace. Blanda still leads. I got an ace. Ah, but you're ahead. I wish I had that ace. It's the ace of spades, the prettiest card in the deck. Rampant checks. Blanda checks. River card is a queen. Blanda has the check mark with a pair of kings. Ramden loves to be aggressive. Bet 65,000. That's a real nice bet. It is if you fold. Victor in full bluff mode with six high. What should I do? I'm stuck. You surprised me with that. Give me some advice. Blanda talking a good game. Ramden playing a good game. Well, I'll help a brother out. <laughs> God, Victor, come on. This is comedy at its best. If you're bluffing me, will you buy me lunch tomorrow? <laughs> I got to get something out of it. I, I, I just can't fold. I'll buy you lunch or dinner anytime, whether I'm bluffing or not. Really? All right, well, that's in the books. Now let's get something for your bluffing me. <laughs> yeah, if you fold, you've got to get at least a mallow bar out. Yeah, it's a healthy bet. It's a good bet. Blanda gives it up and shows his king. All right, I promise to buy you dinner, all right? Very nice, sir. Very nice. Wow, bet. everyone's showing their bluff today. That's why you're Victor Randall. And that's why he's raking in your chips, and that's why he's one of the best players left in the room. The 2008 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's Best Light, brewed for a man's taste, Miller Brewing Company, and in part by the World Series of Poker. Shouldn't you be playing for a bracelet next year? Pre-register at worldseriesofpoker.com. 
back inside the Rio as this pressure packed day winds down and the eliminations pile up. The short stacks were just hoping this day would bring them money. Once it did, they push in and hope. And a lot of them get knocked out in a hurry. Let's take the money and run and pump some of that money back into the local economy. We'll wait for the next year. A lot of them will, including Pat Pez, and it was just knocked out. Danny Negrano's personal photographer is done. At another table, Vanessa Russo was all in and all out. You got money now, Vanessa. Don't get the cheap invitations that killed Susan and Seinfeld. <laughs> Vanessa has three caches at this World Series. This was her first ever main event cache. Billy Gazes is out. He ran into pocket aces. When he squeezed out those two aces, I didn't like the chance to then. Another one of my favorites to the rail. Billy, I'll buy you a bracelet. As the eliminations continue, tables break, players get moved. There is blogger turned poker player Jeremiah Smith with his 1.2 million chips moving to a new table. But he needed a service tray to carry over all his chips. He was the chip leader not too long ago, but now there is a new sheriff in town, Jeremy Joseph, sitting on almost 1.4 million in chips. Jeremy in a hand right now with Jean Robert Ballant after the turn. Two aces are on the board. Jeremy made a big bet. And action is now to Jean Robert. And Jean Robert is going to give it up to the biggest stack. Joseph went to the University of Michigan, and he's got Jean Robert wishing he were back in China scrounging for toilet paper. <laughs> Jeremy Joseph, 23 year old, just squeezed into the cash at last year's main event. Been playing poker for six years. Lives in one of the prettiest spots around Norman South Lake Tahoe. I live in North Lake Tahoe. <laughs> On the E-Trade financial chip count, you see Joseph and Jeremiah Smith, the only two players over the one million chip mark. Sigurd Eskelin used to be the chip leader. He's now in the ninth spot, but still sitting at our featured table. The fourth grade teacher from Oslo, Norway, does have the biggest stack at this table right now. Sigurd, a teacher, graduated from Teachers University in Oslo, Norway. James McManus on the button and on the Milwaukee's best side pocket cam, ace queen offsuit. At this feature table, if you don't have a PhD in bluffing, you ought not be here. <laughs> a raise to 11,000 from McManus. Ace five offsuit for Escalant. Our players now concentrating on building these stacks to give them a shot at going far. Escalant re raised to 40,000. Now action back to McManus. McManus bluffed Escalant out of a pot earlier. McManus, that best hand right there, will raise it up to 108,000. We're not talking bluffing here. We're talking uber aggression. I'm all in. All in. Wow, and an all in from Escalin. It's a pre-flop blood in. fest, and this would put McManus all in. But if McManus calls, Escalin in trouble as he has Escalin dominated. I call. He calls. Good call. A very good call. Okay. Oh. Wow, sickness. Wow. Double sickness. Oh, my God. Escalin is a fourth grade teacher, but he plays like he's a, a buck naked skydiving bounty hunter. <laughs> Here's the flop now. And there's a queen. McManus all but puts an end to this hand. Indeed, McManus now positioned for a huge double up. Escalin looks like he's about to hand half his stack to James McManus. Turn cards and ace will give the check mark to McManus. Ace is up, means a double up. All right. You're done. That is a great ace five shove. I love that shove. That's a great shove. Saab loves to see the reckless action. Oh, man. You got the best of me every pot. Right well, it would help Sigurd if you had better cards. I, I, didn't. I wouldn't get there now. I've lost, uh, lost the touch. Yeah, the touch and over half your stack. Today was all about the money. He's real! Some left the main event empty-handed. Others, yes. like Chow Jang, made money and then made their exit. Uh, I don't want to speak. Why are you doing Those it? remaining include players with big names, some with big chip stacks, and champions with big aspirations. If I could beat uh, 6,800 people, they'll be talking about me forever. Former chip leader Brian Shadlick is now a short stack, while Sigurd Eskelin took the lead and then took a big hit. The quest for the cash is over. The battle for the bracelet is on. Yeah. For Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarran. See you next time from the main event.